Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray that y'all blessed today and that y'all still marching on in your walk. That you're building yourselves up in the spirit of the Lord. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The spirit of God is a reality. And there's a way to build ourselves up in the spirit. That's why Ephesians says, do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. That means be constantly filled, always filling yourself up in the spirit of God, in prayer, in the word, in worship, in fellowship, in witnessing. I tell you what, brothers and sisters, when I witness for the Lord, I get refreshed on the inside. I get stirred up. And the enemy will try to suppress that. He did that to me today when I went out into the city. I just felt suppressed in my spirit and I got in an Uber and I began to share my testimony with the Uber lady. But I wasn't feeling so fiery. And it's almost like it was a grudge and uh, I was grudgingly trying to witness to her. And, you know, I, I shared my testimony and I talked to her about her soul and she was all happy, you know, and she was like, thank you. Uh, you made me really think like somebody never, ever told her about the Lord before and um, her standing before the judgment seat of God. But. The thing was, is I was suppressed. And uh, when I got out the Uber, I was like, Lord, what is going on with me? Why do I feel like I'm suppressed, like I'm locked up on the inside? And it was like spiritual resistance. And um, I was being hindered. And I had to like talk to the Lord and talk to myself and coach myself. What is wrong with me, Jacob? Jacob, you need to stop this. What, what's going on? You need to shake this off. And I was talking to myself, coaching myself. And then I got into another Uber and, um, man, the Spirit of the Lord broke free in that one. Ah, hallelujah. I mean, that was amazing, that Uber ride. It's like the Spirit of the Lord was just flowing because I was like, oh, I'm not going to be suppressed this next time. But I got refreshed. I felt so good when I got out the Uber car. I was like, wow, thank you, Lord. And, you know, if you belong to Christ, you will be refreshed when you witness. But you got to recognize when you're being suppressed spiritually because you have to realize that we are in a war and there is going to be principalities that's going to try to suppress us, to try to get us hindered where we don't witness and we don't share the word of God. There's a real battle that's waging on the battlefront of this world for the souls of humanity. They want to suppress the people of God where, they're, where we don't witness and we don't share the word of God so that others don't hear about Jesus. This thing is serious. This was what creation is all about. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God. It's about heaven or and hell. It's a real war that's being waged right now for the souls of humanity. And if we belong to Christ, we are in the middle of a battle. This is serious and we have to recognize this. We have to see it like this in the spirit. To understand that hey, we are part of the army of the Lord. We are soldiers. God is training us. He is building us up and he is using us as a weapon, a battle axe that he can wage war against the kingdom of darkness. He wants to use us as a vessel, as an oracle where he can speak through. But we have to make sure that we maintain ourselves in the spirit of God and recognize when we are being suppressed. And we got to get into prayer and sometimes coach ourselves, tell yourself, shake it off. Shake it off. Don't, don't let yourself be suppressed. Recognize that because you'll be refreshed when you witness for Christ. As I just experienced with 
that second Uber ride. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And it's a blessing to, to share the Word of God with people, especially when they're willing to listen. Sometimes people are not willing to listen, but you got to share the Word of God anyway, and there might be some conflict. It's not easy living in the world for Jesus. It's not easy ministering the gospel in a dark and dying world to people who are lost, to people who are bound by sin, to people who are bound by demons. There are people that will come at you. It will bring warfare. And that's why you see in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, it's the warfare chapter where it talks about put on the shoes shod with the gospel of peace. And that's talking about evangelism. And that context is in the warfare chapter. God has given us an understanding that, look, when you go out there to evangelize, when you go out there to share your witness and your testimony and and you preach the word of God, you have to be ready. Do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Know that when you go out there and you begin to stand for Jesus, that there is going to be a war that's going to come against you. Hell is going to make an attempt to try to stop you. It's going to bring tribulation and persecution against you and hopes that they can get you to stop. And that's why I always warn people so that they know when you go out there and you do things for the Lord, there's going to be persecution. There's going to be opposition. And you got to set your heart to know that this stuff is going to happen. And whether it happens or not, I don't care. I'm still going to keep pressing. I'm still going to get keep pushing. I'm not going to allow myself to stumble. And be offended in my heart because people are coming against me because I'm standing for Jesus. Because my friends, it's going to happen. I have people come in my face, rip up signs, wanting to punch me in my face, getting really aggressive. These are things that we're going to face when we stand for Jesus, when we witness the truth of his word. We look at all the apostles, how they all got martyred except for John. He was exiled to an island. We look at the prophets in the Old Testament. I mean, they was killed. Jeremiah was sawed in half. We look at our Lord and Savior, Jesus. They nailed him to a cross. And they didn't nail him to the cross because he went around telling them, hey, God loves you and he got a wonderful plan for you. No, the Bible says in John 7, 7, this is the words of Jesus. He says, the world hates me because I testify that their works are evil. They hated Jesus. They nailed him to a cross because Jesus went around and he spoke the truth. He testified that their works were evil and they didn't like it. They got upset. They persecuted him. And this is what's going to happen to us. A servant is not greater than his master. And the more we walk closer in that place with Christ, the more we're going to come under the same opposition that our Lord and Savior came under. They're going to come against us. They're going to hate us. But we have to ready our hearts and know that this stuff's going to happen. So when it does We don't stumble away. We don't get offended because so many people, they start off strong with the Lord. They they have the joy of their salvation and they get fiery and they want to witness for the Lord. And when they go out and they start talking to people, persecution comes against them. And then you never see them go out again. They get offended. They stumble away. That's what it says in the book of Mark. It talks about those who receive the word with joy, but when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Immediately they get offended. And what happens? They don't go out anymore. And so many people, they, they fall away because of this. So we have to be ready. Evangelism is warfare. There is a battle for souls. There is an unseen realm out there that will unleash an assault against you when you begin to stand for Jesus. Jesus told us that we would be hated because of him. The word of God says that all those who live godly 
in Christ shall suffer persecution. And you'll experience this when you go out. But hallelujah, praise the Lord. It's refreshing to your life to know that you call by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and that God will use you as a voice. And he will empower you. He will strengthen you as you submit to the word, as you submit to prayer, as you fill yourself with the spirit by staying close to Christ, by getting into the word, by spending time in worship. You can't fight this battle outside of the strength of Christ. The Bible talks about in Ephesians 6 that we are to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might to put on the whole armor of God so that we can withstand the wiles of the devil. And the wiles of the devil is the onslaughts that he's going to bring against you when you start moving forward in your walk. But notice in the context of scripture, it doesn't tell us to be strong within ourselves. We have to be strong in the Lord. We have to be strong in prayer. We have to be strong in the word. We have to be strong in worship. It's vital that we stay close to Christ because the enemy will strategize against us. So glory be to the Lamb of God. Be refreshed in your walk. Recognize when your witness is being suppressed and don't allow that suppression to keep you in a rut. Recognize it and shake it off. Get in a prayer and then tell yourself you're not going to allow this stuff to hinder you. You got to voice that stuff out loud. You got to voice what you're going to do. You got to voice out loud your breakthrough. And say, I'm not going to allow this stuff to hold me down. I'm a soldier in Christ. I'm a witness for my Lord and Savior. And I'm going to lift up my voice like a trumpet. I'm a cry aloud and spare not. I'm going to be a battle axe for my Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So glory be to the Lamb of God. I pray that y'all are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Build yourself up. Get together with other believers so that you can sharpen one another up. And if you need prayer for anything, get in touch with me. I will pray for you. I will do whatever I can to help because this is a battle and we need each other. We need each other's prayers. We need each other's encouragement because the enemy is real. And he will strategize. That's why the Bible says to be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, he walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So we must be sober and vigilant in spirit because we have an adversary. We have an opponent that's going to come to challenge us. And we must be on guard in the spirit. We must be wide awake, not sleeping like the rest of the world is. We must get together with other like-minded Christians that are on the same mission as we are. We must surround ourselves with other soldiers in Christ so that we can begin to rub off on each other. This is how we grow, brothers and sisters. So glory be to the Lamb of God. Y'all be blessed and keep fighting the good fight of faith and waging a good warfare in Jesus' mighty name.